Jesus, I trust in you. Sound familiar? Maybe you've seen this little phrase at the bottom of a portrait of Jesus, you know, in which there are like two rays coming out of his chest. I know I have. I've seen it like a thousand times. But a few days ago, I realized that I've seen it so often, I've never really taken it seriously. Well, if you're like me, and you've seen that picture of the divine mercy, which is what it's called, but you've never actually prayed those words, Jesus, I trust in you. Today's gospel is an invitation to live this Lent trusting in Jesus. To live this Lent saying, Jesus, I trust in you. So here's what today's gospel was about. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard of this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. In our spiritual lives, there are, I guess, like moments of light and moments of darkness. And there are some moments in our spiritual lives, in our relationship with Jesus, in which we have a strong experience of Him, of His love for us. Perhaps you've had a similar experience like Jesus, where you felt God telling you, you are my beloved son, you are my beloved daughter, with whom I am well pleased. You know, maybe it was after confession one time, where you came out and you really felt how Jesus forgave you from your sins, and you felt how light your shoulders were, and you just felt how you were walking on clouds. Or maybe it was after a retreat, or during a retreat, where you felt extremely loved, unconditionally loved by Jesus, and you felt him really, really close to you. Well, that's the experience Peter, James, and John had at the Transfiguration. It was so amazing, Peter said, Lord, it is good that we are here. Let me make three tents for you, for Elijah, and for Moses. Whenever we've had these experiences, we 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 just want them to last for a long time. If it was if it's possible, forever, right? That's the experience Peter, James, and John had. And like I said, in our spiritual lives, there's also moments of darkness, and that's the experience of the other nine apostles. Where were they? Right? Jesus had twelve apostles. Where were the other nine? Well, the great Raphael gives us the answer to that. Not the Ninja Turtle Raphael, but Raphael Sanzio, the Italian master of art who marked the peak of the Renaissance in art. Uh, he once painted this scene of the Transfiguration, and in that scene, he basically points out where the other nine were. So in this little gospel reflection, uh, I've sent a picture along with the reflection like I always do. And it's the painting Raphael made. And if you take a look at that painting, at the top, I guess you could say like the painting is divided between, excuse me, two halves. The top half is the transfiguration, and the bottom half is what's happening to the other nine apostles. In the bottom half, you have two groups. You have, on the left, a group of uh, men who are confused and trying to explain to the other group that there's something going on. And the right group... The group on the right is basically being led by this boy who looks possessed, right? And his father is behind him, and he's looking very intently at the other group, kind of angry, no? And everyone behind them is sort of angry as well, no? <clears throat> okay, so uh, Raphael basically points out that the other nine apostles, in the like, while Peter, James, and John are having this amazing experience of who God is, they're having a hard time. <laughs> Right? And where does Raphael get that from? He gets it from the gospel. 
immediately after this passage, we read, and when they came to the crowd, right? So this is like after Peter, James, John, and Jesus come down from the mountain. Uh, they come to the crowd where the other nine are, and a man came up to Jesus and kneeling before him said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is for he is an epileptic and he suffers terribly. For often he falls into fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples and they could not heal him. So that's what's happening while Peter, James, and John are having this amazing experience of God's love for them, while they're having this transfiguration experience. In the spiritual lives of the other nine apostles, they're going through a moment of darkness, a moment of um, dryness. You know? And that's happened to, that, that happens to everyone as well in the spiritual life. Think about after a retreat, when two weeks have gone by, and, and then you start to realize, man, my prayer life is terrible right now. <laughs> right? I felt God really close to me two weeks ago during that retreat, but right now I don't. Right now, he's quiet. Right now, I would love to feel that like fuzzy, awesome fire I felt, but I don't. And that is an experience we all have. Here's the thing though. If you've had a transfiguration experience, in other words, if you're like Peter, James, and John, and you've had this very, very special experience of God, this very unique experience of God's love for you, and you find yourself like the other nine apostles saying, oh man, like, where are you, Lord? <laughs> I feel abandoned. I feel alone. Nothing's working. I don't understand why this is happening. If you're like them, there's a reason why you can still trust in Jesus. And this is important because most of the times when we come to this moment, it's harder to trust in Jesus, right? It's harder to trust in Jesus when you don't feel him that close to you. When you're not at that transfiguration experience like Peter, James, and John. It's harder. And it's very easy to trust in Jesus when you have had a, when, when you're in a transfiguration experience, when you're experiencing God's love for you, whether that was in confession or in a retreat or during adoration or maybe on missions, you know, when you were serving someone and, and you really felt like you saw Jesus in this person that you were serving. Well, here's the thing. Uh, Peter, James, and John also had that experience and they came down the mountain with Jesus. And when they came down the mountain with Jesus, they remembered the transfiguration experience. They remembered. Why does God let you experience him in a very special way? Not like everyone else. No, why did Jesus let Peter, James, and John experience his transfiguration and not the other nine? Well, the reason is very simple. It's because there will come a moment when it's hard to trust in him. And when that moment comes, you can remember that transfiguration experience and you can still trust in him and your faith won't waver and your trust won't die. So if you're like the other nine and you find yourself in a sort of moment of doubt, of despair, of loneliness, of spiritual dryness, remember the transfiguration experience that you've had. Remember how God has revealed his amazing love for you. Remember those moments where you really felt him close to you. That transfiguration experience is what's going to help you to say once again, Jesus, I trust in you. In other words, what I'm trying to say is if you find it hard to pray those words, Jesus, I trust in you. If you find it hard to say those words, to pray those words with all of your heart, remember those transfiguration experiences you've had. Those experiences where you've really felt God's love for you. Remember those experiences and, and just go by, just go through each one. And remember that experience and say, Jesus, I trust in you. For each experience, you know, just like as you remember each one, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Let those transfiguration experiences kill your trust problems in Jesus. Let them overcome that mistrust. And soon, very soon, you will see what it means to pray those words. Jesus, I trust in you. And how healing, how freeing, and how beautiful it is to put your trust in Jesus. 